All right, we're going to put the water pump on next. Got a clean gasket surface. Now it is a paper gasket that can go on dry, but I put a tiny bit of RTV on it just to keep it in place while I'm putting it on. Not to be a sealing agent, but a couple of dots here and there will keep it from sliding. Keep it from leaving on you while you're trying to install it. Putting the main timing pulley in, so we're going to slide him on. I'll we'll put the key in and make sure we get the chamfered edge in first so it goes in the right way. No play, so that's good. Next, we're going to get our timing belt. And this is highly critical for performance. The words must face forward. So the words have to face. <laughs> you can read it, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it works both ways, but yeah. my brain has an issue with it the other way. Mine would too, actually. And then I'd look in the in the engine compartment, check timing or something, and I'd be like, "Ew, why is that facing the wrong way?" and torque down to I believe it's a it's 122 foot pounds so it's quite a bit yeah so to get away with that so with our tool it conveniently hits the bottom of the engine stand so it becomes a one person operation Done. Nice. All right, so we're going to put the block alignment or the head alignment pins in. So these had to come out to resurface the block. And really easy. You drop them in. Give them a little tap. You do want to press them into the block because there's actually enough room in the head for them to completely submerge themselves. And then they don't do anything. So once that is in, Clean the oil off, we get to do the next fun step, which is putting the headsteads in. And this is where it starts to look like an actual race machine. So we will get all of our ARP headsteads, we're going to put a little bit of the lube on the bottom. Take two of them and just roll them together. I'll get them all started and then we will. And the good part about using uh, head studs like this, if I ever want to take the head off, I can reuse them. Correct. As opposed to the stretch bolts, yeah. which I really don't like. That, and they're much stronger. So when I'm running boost, I shouldn't get any head lifting at all. All right, so we're going to put the pan on. And what we need to do is we need to put a uh, gasket maker on the bottom of the windage tray. Oops, this one. Then we'll set that down like there, we'll put our oil pickup tube on, and then we'll put gasket maker all the way up to here and up to the edges of these rubber uh, grommets on the both sides, and then we can set the pan down and bolt it on. So, and you can put too much of this stuff on. We're not looking for gobs of it. Yeah, I've seen nightmares where people were taking it off and they they never cleaned it off so they had like three or four layers on there and yeah. it just doesn't seal well. People think more is better with that, but it's really not. Uh, too little is definitely a leak, but you can't have too much. Yeah. 
that and it starts getting messy when it starts flowing out the sides. This is not a complete show car, but I do want it looking nice at least, presentable. Such a beautiful motor so far. And that's the right stuff, you said? This is the right stuff. So that's just like regular RTV, but it's pressurized, huh? Yeah, it's the same, it's the same stuff. This is easier for doing the... Oil pump and whatnot, where you need to be more precise with it. the valves and as of right now we do not have any valve permanently dedicated to a hole but we will once we lap them. So we're going to start with the intake valves and we had this block cut so these have all been reground so there's these are, these are essentially perfect but we want to verify that our valves and the intake valves we're reusing we want to verify that these perfectly match the valve seat. So we're going to be using some of this lapping compound and some oil. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit on the valve seat. And I'm just going to dip the tip of this in oil. I want to make sure that it slides through the valve guide correctly. And it ought to just fall in essentially with no force whatsoever. Then what we're going to do Good. We have a suction cup on the end of the drill, and you can do this by hand, but this is substantially faster. So I'm going to stick that on the valve, and this. The more centered you get, the better it is. There we go. Let's 
listening for that tone change. seat now and it should be all nice with one color we shouldn't see any pits or divots in it and we're getting a nice broad contact patch so that's good so that looks good to go he's good to go we'll clean it up and then when we're done with this uh, the diamond grit and the glapping compound you do not want in your motor so we're gonna take this outside and pressure wash it again and make sure there's absolutely none of that lapping compound left but I'm gonna go ahead and do all 16 valves that way, and then we'll be ready to roll. slides up right behind that. If you don't prep it. So on the 94 to 05s, the valve springs are the same on both sides. 90 to 93, they're, the exhaust and intake are different, but we're going to go ahead and load all these up. So each one gets one of these little bitty shims. Make sure you're only putting one on there. And we're going to slide these down. We'll take a screwdriver down there and make sure that they're set correctly. And this piece is just so that if the spring rotates, it doesn't start cutting the aluminum head. So this gives it a flat. Because the springs weight. are steel. Well, because the springs aren't round all the way, there's an edge. Yeah. So if it were to start rotating that way, it would start cutting it. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, we're going to put the tightly coiled end down. So we're going to go ahead and oh, so they're variable springs then. Slot. Nice. Some springs in. Okay. on each one. Now we're starting ready to put the keepers in. So we get our valve spring compressor. I'll go ahead and set it to length on this first one. So I'm going to compress it. I'm going to go ahead and shove it down a little bit more so I got room. Now, to put the keepers in, I'm going to get some sort of tacky goop. I just use more of the assembly lube. And if you put a little bit on the inside, you can then stick it to your screwdriver on the other side and go right in, get it in the groove, and it'll stay there. 
And I'm going to go ahead and slot it around to the other side so I can get the second one in. It'll work nice and solid in the groove. Slot that one in next to it. And now when I release this up nice and slow, boom. We'll go ahead and compress this one. And rinse and repeat. Stand is what makes this doable. It's trying to balance it on the table is like an impossibility. Nice. And no flyaway keepers. Mm -hmm.